Look, I grew up in the early 90s watching SNL, dude. And, yeah. you know, I mean, this is going to segue into talking about your family and your brother and everything. But on my Mount Rushmore of life is your brother and Adam Sandler. Of life, dude. Oh, really? Like, I, I used to do stand-up comedy. I had to transition out of it because I wanted to make money at some point. <laughs> but Yeah, I you mean, don't do it. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> And, it's not uh, a making money making thing. But I just remember in middle school running around, just getting you know, like everything. Like yeah. it's you know, it'd be like, like what I said, like your your favorite baseball player of all time, Juan Gonzalez. Like yeah. meeting it, meeting the entire yeah. Gonzalez family would be a big deal for you. So no, yeah, uh, there's a, still a lot of people you know that uh, remember him, and that's why I made the documentary because I wanted to. Show people, you know, what he was like, and that there's a lot of been said about Chris and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I kind of wanted to set the record straight a little bit on on some of that stuff, and it was, uh, yeah, it was a those are it was a great documentary. I was I was happy with it, you know. So, well, let me ask you, you you guys are less than a year separated. What is it? Yeah, no, Chris was like a year. Yeah, it's called Irish Twins, We're right? Irish, yeah. So you know, I think he's like a month, a year, like a month. Uh, older than I am, yeah. Which is crazy. So, the, your older yeah. brother, one year apart, is Chris Farley, legendary. I yeah, mean, but like yeah, you have yeah, a lot yeah. of what he had. We're like Irish twins, exactly. Yeah. Kevin, yeah. question. So, so for, when but I think we're very about different. I'm like Chris Farley light. You know, I don't. I'm not going to throw myself on a table. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> so yesterday we're we're uh, hanging out at this event and we're talking to Pompliano, right? Yeah. Pomp, uh, Bitcoin. And I'm asking about his family, five right. brothers, how they're doing, and he's telling the story massive of massive guy in the Bitcoin. Yeah, space. He's, he's, is he? Yeah, yeah he massive. is. And and he's but all the five brothers, they're all doing something, right? From 26, the youngest to 33, being him, the oldest. They're all players. They're all killers. Yeah. And I said, so tell me about the household growing up. Well, how was dad like? How was mom like? And he said, you know, dad was a worker six days a week, but mom ran the show. And I said, but tell me about the whole you know dynamics because I got four kids. Yeah. What was the Farley household like growing up? That's what I want to know. Yeah, all, all you brothers know. too, right? Yeah. No, yeah. there's one, oh, si no, one sister. No, one okay. sister. Sister Barb, yeah, yeah. yeah, who's actually the funniest. Um, but, you know, it, it was a lot of like because we had four boys in the basement. You know, we had a house that had a basement. We didn't have an upstairs, so it was kind of like living in a dungeon area. Like, so I don't know, but the, we also Wisconsin was cold. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of comedians come from like Canada and Wisconsin because you're trapped inside and there's no other thing to do other than like, we didn't have a lot of things growing up, you know, other than I'm going to try to make you laugh, you know, or else I'm going to try to make you laugh mm -hmm. or I'm going to do something. And then we dare always daring. I dare you to do that. I dare you to do that. And we'd make up games like, does this hurt? You know, it's <laughs> a pretty simple game. You don't game. want to lose at that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what it's was a the, the pretty oldest, simple game, you know. The oldest to youngest. Give us the rundown. Well, Come there's on. Barb, who's the oldest. She She's, was the oldest yeah, sister. Gotcha. She had her own section of the house. You know, yeah. So we couldn't go over there. She had uh, Carpenter's albums that we couldn't touch and that kind of thing. And then, uh, then they had the rest of us just kind of like piled in an area. We'd switch like... One, one of us would get in a fight, and then I'd have to room with John, and then you know one of us would get in another fight, and we'd have to room with Chris. And there's there's like three boys? One girl? Four boys. Four boys. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And and what what are the age gaps? From Boy, for they're, someone they're that works with Chris close. Farley, you'd think he'd know his oh, bio. Yeah. To be honest, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, know, I know Chris and Kevin. That's who I know. Mm -hmm. First, Ke I'm hearing Kevin. that Barb is the uh, most but, funny. But hey, hour yeah. two, we get to Kevin's cousins. John's the older yeah, brother. Yeah. John's the John's the older brother, right? John. John's uh, youngest. He's the youngest. John's the youngest. Yeah. And then I, I have a brother, you. Tom, yeah. and then a brother, Chris, and then myself, and then John. And how many years separate the... There's only a couple years. Yeah. Dude, what is that? happened You guys all went to middle school, high school. All at the same time, pretty much. Yeah. What was yeah. that like? I mean, football team, you know, parties, keg, yeah. this basement. What was all that like? It was, you know, I, I think that I look at kids growing up now, and I'm like, I kind of feel bad. Like we were out a lot. Like I'd be like, see you later, I'm out of here, you know. <laughs> and I'd go be with my friends for hours, and I don't know. I never went home or anything. Like, I never went in front of the television. You know, we had to make up our own fun in our own and when when the vcr hit they were like oh wow i'm gonna watch this all day long but no we were making our own fun like we're out in the out and playing basketball or, or making up our own games or mm -hmm. trying to usually chris was always the funniest like we could make him do anything you know what i mean <laughs> we could like, he would do anything like uh, anything like, anything I, no it's like you know you you make these dares where you go hey i dare you do this i dare you do that and you know <laughs> i'm not gonna do that like He'd do that. Craziest dare he ever yeah, did. What's the craziest dare? No, I don't know. 
you know, running, you know, the simple one was running around the, the block naked. You know, which is, <laughs> That's just easy. How could that ever Ego not be funny? School. That's <laughs> pretty simple. I mean, but oh. but it takes, it's, it's not a very, you know, nobody came up with the idea, like really thought about the idea. In Wisconsin. But it was the most dangerous thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because... You're ultimately going to get a call from the neighbor going, hey, I just saw you. Chris is running around naked again. <laughs> but think about it. If you're an yeah. expert at physical comedy, which yeah. he was, yeah. I mean, that had to be the yeah. funniest sight. And you couldn't get mad, right? You, I mean, you just see, see Chris hilarious. Farley running down, you know, doing a whole mile around, mm-hmm. the, you know. And then he had to, the, the, he had to complete the, the thing, though. You had to. You can't back out of the dare. Yeah. Nobody when we likes made the these dares, oh. When we made these dares, you had to complete the dare. Now, were you the one... You couldn't back out. Were you basically. the one mostly daring him to do the thing, or yes. like what was your? I wasn't. What was involved your involvement? In all I this? was a chicken. I would make the game up. Yeah, I would help make the game, but I'd never do the thing. He was always doing those. You're things. the producer, and he's yeah. there more than time. I would get the credit. And I would laugh. <laughs> but by the way, what, what's the story with Dad? Dad was like an instigator. He would come in. He would like, hey, yeah. It seems like he was he was uh, also orchestrating a little bit yeah, of this. A lot of that. He would be one of those things where he he had five kids that he'd rile up, and then. And then get him into a frenzy and then walk out the room and be like, all right, <laughs> my mom handle it. But he was uh, an asphalt salesman, so he, he sold asphalt for a living. And, you know, if you ever see an asphalt crew that's like 120 degrees out on the road, and then we would sell the oil for the asphalt. And so, you know, it was tough. And if like, we didn't do good at school, he'd be like, I'll get you on the asphalt crew if you like. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> right, God. there's the ultimate threat. Pat, you know, <laughs> yeah, Kevin's yeah. stand-up routine is awesome. Yeah. And, and a lot of it, you talk about, you know, your family. You talk about Chris. He's got one joke where he talks about, I'm, yeah, I got to find out if this was a joke or if this really happened. The joke yeah. you had where Chris came back for Christmas with sex toys for oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he thought it'd be really funny. <laughs> you know, and, and he's like, yeah, I got this is going to be funny. I'm going to give everybody a sex toy. And I go, yeah, it's not going to be funny. You know, you're going you're gonna to ruin Christmas. And he bought too many of them. Yeah, you know, 100, you he bought 100 yeah. sex toys yeah. back. And so after you opened up the first one, you're like, oh, okay, I got a, you know, I got a sex toy. And then, and then you open up like 20 of them. <laughs> you said, Dad's not going to like this. And he brought this for mom, over. dad, the yeah, brothers. Yeah, the whole works. Everyone gets a sex yeah, toy or two. Yeah, and the joke ran out about after the third present. you know. And then we're all just kind of like, nah, you've got to go to the hospital. There's something wrong with <laughs> so he just ran around the block <laughs> naked. There's something wrong with you. So then he just ran around the block And how old is he when this story happened? He was uh, old, too old to know. Right, like Probably the, the, in college. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, it was too old to be That's doing just that. Hilarious. Yeah, no. I can only imagine the reaction. You know, you come home like if I did that with my dad, what my dad's reaction would be. The funniest you, uh, thing about him is though, he would do those things where he thought it was, he legit, legitimately thought it was going to be funny, and I'm like, this is going to miss the mark on such a level that is like, <laughs> wow, this is going to be so embarrassing. It's going to be great, and he was just, but he'd still commit to the joke, and that was right. part of his comedy where. Even though you weren't really sure if this was going to be funny, but he would go so far into it that he made it funny, right? Even just because of his commitment to it, you know. Would you so, have to applaud? I mean, yeah. Well, by the way, yeah. didn't 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 in the documentary that you produced? Didn't I don't know if it was the EP or or the the producer who was that said. He didn't just like comedians that were funny. He liked comedians that took a lot of risks. Yeah. And it seems like your brother was a risk taker with a lot of these things. On stage. Some of this, yeah, yeah, on stage. Yeah, oh, his life too. <laughs> but I mean, on stage, he would always appreciate any kind of comedy, even like just to get up there. I mean, you did stand up. Just mm-hmm. to get up there with a microphone or get up there and do improv. We were in the improv in Second City and that kind of thing. And Chicago. All of us, yeah, we all did that. And so when you improv, you just, you're starting out with nothing just to like a – you know, and a suggestion from the audience, and then you know, everybody goes from there. And so just to get up there takes a lot of guts. It just does, you know, and st- it's, it just takes a lot. So he always empathizes. Yeah, hey, if you gave it a chance, you know, if you get up there and you and you didn't try, he didn't like that. You got to get up there and really try, take risks. And, and if you took a risk, he'd be like, I love it. You took a risk. It didn't work, but who cares? It's about trying it, taking a risk on stage or wherever you're doing it. Sure, and that's what separates the great ones because everybody's up there, you're feeling naked, right? And you got to keep going on and that's how you learn to persevere and mm-hmm. and come up with some some good standby jokes. That used always to, we had a football coach uh, that uh, had this saying, which was funny, like whenever you know you had a play that you messed up 
And then you'd go to the coach, you're like, well, I thought I needed to pull this way. And my coach would always go, well, don't think, do. <laughs> and he goes, if you're going to make a mistake, make an aggressive mistake. And Chris always used to say that, you know, would that apply to stage where you're not, not sure what you're doing out there, but make that aggressive. And then you could kind of fake it. You're like, I knew what I was doing the whole Did time. Did you play football as well? Yeah. So yeah. what positions were you guys? Oh, we were all on the line because we were too big. Let's get know? all the big boys on the yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were not skilled positions. I could positions. just see some Farleys <laughs> pulling guards yeah. over there. All right, yeah. sweep left. Yeah. No, Farley's going we left. were all on the line. Yeah, we were all on the line. There was no skilled positions. What was that like guards. in high school? If you're, in, you know, he's in 10th grade, you're in 9th grade or whatever, senior, junior, Locker room, football, like Just boys constant. being boys. What was that like? It was a competition to see who could be the funniest. To me, we valued funny guys. Yeah. And if you were a funny guy in in our school or any of our friends or even our family, you, you rose to the top. You know, if you could make everyone laugh, because, mm-hmm. you know, that was that was to me, you, that was the goal to be the 100%. funny guy, the, the guy that was always making people laugh. You know, and he was always constantly the winner of that. He was he won that every time. You know, and did you in your grade? Like, Sometime, if he was the yeah, funniest for yeah. his grade, were you? I was in my grade. Yeah, 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 I was. I learned from everyone. It just it seemed natural. You know, being growing up and trying to just make uh, make the other guys laugh. And was everybody laugh. trying to impress Dad? Like, what was the impetus for yeah, everyone's definitely. trying to be funny in the Farley household? Yes, yeah, was it stemmed from my Dad? Dad was very funny. Really? Yeah, and uh, I think there was always this, you know, you just want to, you know, uh, make the big guy laugh. You know, if you could mm-hmm. make the big guy laugh, then you were you were in good. Well, then he's not mad at you. You're not also, getting in trouble. you're right. Because, you know, it's not like yeah. we didn't get in trouble because we did. If you enjoyed this short clip, click over here to watch another short clip. And if you want to watch the entire episode, the entire podcast, click here.